Hi everyone, uh, I've been buying uh, some more faulty test gear off of eBay um, again and uh, this time I've bought a, a Raycal Dana 1991 Universal Counter so let's have a look. Okay, here it is, it's uh, it's in fair condition, it's a bit dirty and a bit dusty um, you can see it on the BNC connectors here, They're instead of shining they're uh, quite uh, like, like they're covered in spray paint or something like that but uh, um, yeah so um, it does power up and model number there 1991 and um, goes through its self test okay um, but what it did say in the ad is that the front push buttons uh, weren't responding very well so um, some of them do some of them don't uh, this up button here seems to work okay but down not and really when you the feel of the buttons is very flat they don't seem to respond very well it's as if they're all uh, broken and just generally been overused over the years so um, let's take a look at it and see what we can do Uh, something of note here, um, last tested, uh, 17th of July, 19, 1985, there. Uh, condition inside, it's pretty clean, actually, uh, yeah, hardly any dust or grime. Okay, that's the front panel off, came off fairly easily. Just had to take the BNC um, nuts off and it slipped out in a pair of headers here, so yeah. Board will come off a, a couple of screws and we'll get access to the switches in the front. And they will have access to the display board. Um, it's got a couple of uh, Intersil uh, 7218s. I uh, haven't seen them for a long, long time. Uh, they were very big in the day. Intersil made a lot of uh, LED driver chips back in the day, back in the 80s. But anyway, that's the board off. And um, from what I read, these. Uh, tactile switches here and um, they're notorious for just basically wearing out problem is you can't get replacements uh, um, although the footprint is um, general for the 
two pin uh, tactile switches they've got a cross cut um, actuator here which you can't get so I'm going to have to try and uh, put something together to replace the switch that will then uh, accept the push button itself so we'll see how we get on with that you can also see that there's, there's no springiness to the, the switches at all um, it just basically lifts up and down of its own accord it's sat in the down position basically all the time so when you press it you're not actually there's no spring return at all um, some of them are worse than others uh, this one here is completely dead this one here has some slight springiness to it um, so I'm, although some of the switches do appear to work um, I'm of a mind at the moment to actually replace the whole lot but uh, obviously first thing I'll do is try and replace one and see how it how it fares so let's uh, we'll start with this one here um, let's get it off and see what happens okay so here's one of the uh, original uh, switches removed from the front panel uh, you can see the cross cut top that will key into the actual button itself and what I've decided to do is replace it with one of these which has got uh, the same footprint basically as the original switch but you can see it's got a, a basically a cylindrical actuator on it which is no, not suitable for this job so what I'm going to do is cut that down a little bit and if you look inside the original uh, button itself you can see the keyway for the cross cut so what I've decided to do is cut that out as you can see here and basically uh, I'll epoxy the new switch into the old top okay I've done the first four switches uh, new switches are soldered in place and the caps the actual button themselves is uh, epoxied onto the uh, shaft of the new switches there so I'm just letting it dry and uh, we'll see how that sits in the uh, panel, front panel uh, check for height etc before I go on and do the rest one thing I will do whilst I've got the panel in bits is uh, give it a good clean um, it's surprising how heavy this is this is a, a, a cast alloy um, front panel bezel plate and it's really heavy you don't see that much nowadays but it's a good opportunity to give the, the front a good clean up with some uh, safe solvent and uh, before it goes back on try and make the thing look as brand new as possible ok, um, glue's dry so the caps are fitted and uh, seem to be working quite good so I'll offer up the front panel and see how they sit there there we go perfect ok, here's the uh, uh, switch plate all back together again with the new tactile switches and as you can hear much better ok that's the uh, 1991 back together again and uh, the switch is all working as they should do hi I just thought I'd uh, run an additional test here on the uh, 1991 here and show it actually in operation very very basic test anyway um, what I'm doing is I'm uh, running the uh, one kilohertz test uh, um, output from my, my oscilloscope up into the uh, 1991 and you can see there I'm on uh, I've got it going into input A and I'm on uh, frequency A here so basically it's displaying 
well near as damn it to uh, a thousand hertz which is one kilohertz here and uh, what I can also do is I can also go down um, and show the period of the same pulse which is uh, um, 1000 microseconds effectively uh, there and um, also, 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 I can show the uh, time interval of um, A to B. Um, basically, the two inputs here. When you're in this mode, the second input is crossed over automatically there. So, what I'm actually doing is I'm uh, measuring the rise from uh, input A to the fall on uh, input B, um, which is basically half the. Uh, uh, waveform, so that's why I'm getting uh, 500 microseconds there. So it um, all seems to be working reasonably well. It does seem to jump around a little bit, um, but I'm not too sure whether there's some um, problem with the 1991 itself, or more than likely it's the uh, um, stability of the uh, 1 kilohertz signal uh, coming out of me, my oscilloscope. But uh, yes, it all seems to be working reasonably well.